This is Morning Prayers at St. Peter's, Ipswich, brought to you online, a place where we study God's Word together and where we join our hearts and our voices before the throne of God, praying for the needs of our world, our church and ourselves. Welcome this morning. Good morning and welcome to our morning prayers from St Peter's Church in Ipsley on Wednesday the 22nd of March 2023. Our readings today are Psalm 86 and John chapter 10 verse 22 to the end. If it's your birthday today, I do wish you a happy birthday and hope that you enjoy your special day. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Hear our voice, O Lord, according to your faithful love, according to your judgment. Give us light. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. And our first reading is Psalm 86. Psalm 86. Hear, O Lord, and answer me, for I am poor and needy. Guard my life, for I am devoted to you. You are my God. Save your servants who trust in you. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I call to you all day long. Bring joy to your servant, for to you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. You are forgiving and good, O Lord, abounding in love to all who call to you. Hear my prayer, O Lord. Listen to my cry for mercy. In the day of my trouble, I will call to you, for you will answer me. Among the gods, there is none like you, O Lord. No deeds can compare with yours. All the nations you have made will come and worship before you, O Lord. They will bring glory to your name. For you are great and do marvellous deeds. You alone are God. Teach me your way, O Lord, and I will walk in your truth. Give me an undivided heart that I may fear your name. I will praise you, O Lord my God, with all my heart. I will glorify your name for ever and ever. For great is your love towards me. You have delivered me from the depths of the grave. The arrogant are attacking me, O God. A band of ruthless men seeks my life, men without regard for you. But you, O Lord, are a compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness. Turn to me and have mercy on me. Grant your strength to your servant and save the son of your maidservant. Give me a sign of your goodness, that my enemies may see it and be put to shame. For you, O Lord, have helped me and comforted me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. As Christians, what is our relationship to God? How does God view us? In King James Bible, we are called holy in verse 2. Elsewhere in the Bible, Christians are called saints of God. How can that be when we are still creatures of sin? And what does that mean? To be holy is to be set apart. To be a saint is to be righteous. We are righteous 
but not because of us. The Lord Jesus Christ paid the price, his death for our sins. As such, God views us through the blood of Christ as holy and set apart for his glory. Don't you think we've got an amazing God? He is ready to forgive and have abundant mercy to everyone who calls upon the name of Christ. When we call upon Christ's name for salvation, we are not just accepting his payment for our sins, but we are making him the Lord and master of our lives. The person who does not bow before Christ as his Lord and master really hasn't accepted his payment for their sins. When Christ saves us, we are now, now holy and therefore our lives should reflect that holiness in changed lives, desiring to do the will of God. Sometimes all we can do is cry out to God because our trouble and pain is so great. We have to remember that the answer to our prayers will sustain us in difficult times. Verse 8 says, Among the gods there is none like you, Lord. The God of the Bible is unique. He is alive and able to do mighty deeds for those who love him. The Lord alone is God. He's not one among many, as some people believe. Only he is worthy to receive glory, honour and power, as we read in Revelation chapter 4, verse 11. David prays to the Lord in verse 11 and says, Teach me your way, Lord. Give me an undivided heart. No matter how well we know God, we can always ask him to increase our awareness and improve our obedience. In Matthew chapter 6 verse 8, Jesus echoed one of these requests in the sixth beatitude. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. It is a prayer that we should learn and one we should use often. It's right to pray for a sign of God's goodness. As David found, it may be just what we need. The Lord gives us signs, the support of family and friends, the fellowship of other Christians, the light of each new day. He cares for us and he knows our situation, even the most desperate ones. Amen. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord, for not only hearing our prayers, but answering them as well. Help us to always lean on you. Amen. Our next reading is John chapter 10, verses 22 to the end. John chapter 10, verse 22 to the end. The unbelief of the Jews. Then came the feast of dedication at Jerusalem. It was winter and Jesus was in the temple area, walking in Solomon's colonnade. The Jews gathered round him, saying, How long will you keep us in suspense, if you are the Christ? Tell us plainly. Jesus answered, I did tell you, but you do not believe. The miracles I do in my Father's name speak for me, but you do not believe because you are not my sheep. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. I gave them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one can snatch them out of my hand. My Father, who has given them to me, is greater than all. No one can snatch them out of my Father's hand. I and the Father are one. 
Again, the Jews picked up stones to stone him. But Jesus said to them, I have shown you many great miracles from the Father. For which of these do you stone me with? We are not stoning you for any of these, replied the Jews, but for blasphemy, because you, a mere man, claim to be God. Jesus answered them, Is it not written in your law, I have said you are gods? If he called them gods, to whom the world of God, the word of God came, and the scripture cannot be broken, what about the one whom the Father set apart at his very own and sent into the world? Why then do you accuse me of blasphemy because I said, I am God's son? Do not believe me unless I do what my father does. But if I do it, even though you do not believe me, believe the miracles that you may know and understand that the father is in me and I in the father. Again, they tried to seize him, but he escaped their grasp. Then Jesus went back across the Jordan to the place where John had been baptizing in the early days. Here he stayed, and many people came to him. They said, though John never performed a miraculous sign, all that John said about this man was true. And in that place, many believed in Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Some months following what had gone on in earlier parts of the chapter, Jesus goes to the Feast of Dedication. This is not a mandatory feast, but Jesus chooses to attend. This is a celebration modern people know best as Hanukkah. While in Jerusalem, Jesus is cornered by an angry mob of religious leaders in an enclosed part of the temple grounds. They challenge Jesus to repeat his teachings and then they attempt to stone him, verses 31 and 32. Again, his Jewish opponents picked up stones to stone him, but Jesus said to them, I have shown you many good works from the Father. For which of these do you stone me? The real point of Jesus' question is that he has performed miracles. Why then do these men insist that he's wicked or blaspheming? Shouldn't they be recognising his authority instead? Jesus points out that his words are in line with scripture and he notes that his miracles ought to influence how these men respond. In so doing, Jesus also makes a clear statement about the perfect perfection of the Bible and that our eternal salvation is determined solely by the relationship we have with Jesus Christ. God's word is without error, something the church has always held to from the beginning. But those appeals fall on deaf ears again, and Jesus has to make an unspecified escape. That encounter is the last time Jesus will directly confront his critics in a public atmosphere prior to his crucifixion and resurrection. Jesus leaves a region controlled by Jerusalem's religious leaders, returning to the place where John the Baptist once preached. Jesus' miracles prove to the people in Perea that he has been sent by God. John could not perform miracles, but he instructed others to believe in Jesus, follow him and respect him. That influence seems to have made the people of the region much more respect, receptive to Jesus in these last days before his crucifixion. Because of John's word, many people believed. Verse 
35 says, Scripture cannot be set aside, is a clear statement of the truth of the Bible. If we accept Christ as Lord, we must also accept his testimony to the Bible as God's word. Ultimately, those who reject God do so purely out of stubbornness and pride, not a lack of evidence. I pray that we will never be found wanting. Amen. We come now to our time of prayer. Let us pray. We pray for the church, Lord. We pray for every leader in our churches around the world. Give them your wisdom and discernment as they lead. We pray that their hearts would be directed first to you, that they would recognise where their true help and strength come from. We ask that you would guard their coming and going, that you would be their refuge and their peace. We pray that you would surround each one with wise counsel, that they would be humble and kind, patient and loving through their actions and words. We pray that their faith in you would be unwavering. We pray for their families. Give them great strength, protection and grace for the days ahead. We ask that you would continue to pave the way for strong, faithful men and women to serve your people. We ask you for the outpouring of your spirit to raise up those you've chosen to lead. As we prepare for Easter, let us not become consumed by commercialism or the facets of the Easter season that have nothing to do with you. Instead, Help us set our minds on you and you alone and all you have to reveal and teach us in this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. Edged sword. We pray for the Bible Society serving back Palestinians and for the political situation in that part of the world. We pray that there will be no more bloodshed. Please protect the Bible Society staff and help them to continue to preserve this precious ministry. We pray that the seeds sown during the Christmas activities will bear fruit and may they receive encouragement, prayers and blessings as they continue their work in difficult and trying times. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for everyone we know who is grieving at this time and name them before you now in the quietness of our heart. We pray especially for Les, Sarah and all the family as they mourn for Pam. Bless those who mourn, eternal God, with the comfort of your love, that they may face each new day with hope and the certainty that nothing can destroy the good that has been given. May their memories become joyful, their days enriched with friendship, and their lives encircled by your love. Jesus Christ is the light of the world, a light which no darkness can quench. And in the darkest nights, when those who mourn feel lost and alone, may your eternal light shine, bringing hope and peace as each new day dawns. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. We pray for all who are sick, especially those personally known to us. We lift their names to you now in the quietness of our hearts.
we remember also those whose names are mentioned in the catch. And we pray especially for Mary, Chris Tilly's mom. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. We pray that during the long hours of night, they will turn to you for comfort and support. We pray for the doctors and nurses looking after them, that they will use their gifts of healing to restore them to full health. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, ruler of all the peoples of the earth, Forgive our shortcomings as a nation. Purify our hearts to see the love, the truth. Give wisdom to our leaders and steadfastness to our people. And bring us at last to that fair city of peace whose foundations are mercy, justice and goodwill, of which you are the designer and builder. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Trusting in the compassion of God as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Thank you for joining me this morning. I do hope you'll be able to join us again tomorrow. If it's your birthday this week, I do wish you a happy birthday and hope that you enjoy your special day. May God, our Redeemer, show us compassion and love. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.